Hello, I'm Taro Toyuzumi, and uh, I'd like to talk about a Bayesian psychophysics model of sense of agency. What is sense of agency? Sense of agency is a feeling that we are in control of what we are doing. In other words, that's a feeling that I, I myself did something. Sense of agency arises from smooth, harmonious flow of intentional actions to expected sensory outcomes. And disruption of this smooth, harmonious flow can reduce sense of agency. People studied uh, sense of agency in re its relation to mental diseases, in particular like schizophrenia or depression. There's an interesting link between sense of agency and uh, time perception. Um, Patrick Huggard and his colleagues explore this effect, uh, which is called intentional binding. In their experimental setup, um, subjects uh, press a button and estimate when the button press happened. Or uh, subjects hear a tone ringing and uh, 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 report what's the tone ringing time. And uh, uh, naturally there is some sensory delay so the perceived action timing um, has some delay with respect to the true timing. The same for the tone. An interesting effect happens when there is a relationship between the action and the outcome uh, tone ringing. So in this experimental setup, uh, subject press a button and that causes a tone ringing after 250 milliseconds. In this voluntary button press condition, um, the estimated timings are biased. And uh, it's biased uh, so that the estimated interval between action and outcome is shorter than the, the true interval. So this is called the intentional binding effect, which is sort of attracting um, to attraction of two event timings. This is the case for uh, voluntary action subject pressing uh, the button uh, voluntary. Um, and this effect is different in the involuntary condition. In this condition, um, experimenter gave a transmagnetic stimulus uh, stimulation to subject's motor cortex. And this TMS stimulation uh, causes subject's finger to twitch. And uh, because of finger twitching, subject presses a button involuntary. And uh, um, in this condition, again, subject gets the timings of a button press and the resulting tone. And in this case, interestingly, the effect was opposite, was the opposite. And the perceived interval between the action and outcome was greater than the true interval. So, um, they discussed this is a reflection of subject's intention and the sense of agency. We wanted to explain this intentional binding effect with a Bayesian model. Our assumption is that uh, subjects try to infer the action and outcome timing uh, optimally by integrating uh, sensory cues, tactile and auditory. And we thought about a Bayesian model because we previously worked on another Bayesian model, another related Bayesian model to explain the ventrochism effect. Ventrochism effect is that uh, when a puppet mouth is moving and uh, a speaker nearby uh, speech speaks, then um, in this condition, people feel that as if this puppet itself is speaking. <laughs> um, and we could explain this effect, this uh, ventral effect, 
as a, a subject of attempt to optimally infer the location of visual um, and auditory stimulus, um, considering two kinds of possibilities. In one possibility, there is an underlying source uh, behind puppet mouth moving and the uh, uh, sound, speech sound coming. Um, and the alternative possibility is that those visual and auditory stimuli are totally independent. And the subjects try to infer which is more likely and use this uh, likely case to explain the position of um, visual, where visual stimulus comes from, where auditory stimulus comes from. And this could explain the ventral chism effect, both uh, um, attraction effect when audiovisual stimuli came close by and the repelling effect when they came from uh, slightly distant places. Um, and indeed, uh, the, the structure of the problem is similar in this intentional binding case. Um, in the voluntary condition with the uh, subject's intentional bottom press, uh, intention is behind the action and the outcome. Indeed, there is a causal link between the action and outcome, but the, the intention is a common source. Um, there's an alternative possibility that maybe the action and outcome are driven by completely separate uh, causes. Um, and uh, the Bayesian observer tried to infer which is more likely and use this to infer the respective timing of action and the outcome. Uh, here's a more detail of the Bayesian inference. In the model, we assume that there is a true action timing and true outcome timing. Subjects don't have an access to this true timing, um, but rather uh, only um, access to the one uh, with the sensory delay and jitter. So um, subjects rely on uh, noisy perceived action timing and perceived outcome timing. Now, um, if the action event and outcome event are totally unrelated independent events, then uh, you can estimate action timing with this uh, you know, proper receptive information alone, and you can estimate outcome timing with this auditory information alone. However, in some cases, subjects think that there is a relationship between this action and outcome maybe there's a causation effect, this action causing the outcome. In that case, it's better to integrate these uh, two sensory inputs to infer action timing and outcome timing. Um, so the question is whether um, a subject should do sensory integration or not. And depending on that choice, uh, subject can use different prior for describing the uh, possible timings of events. Um, one is a causal prior and the other is a causal prior. Um, in the causal case, if a subject thinks that there is a, a causal link between the action and outcome, uh, then um, the prior knowledge is that the outcome happens after some time, some fixed time, um, approximately fixed time after this action. And uh, um, we use the prior delay of 230 milliseconds in our model because this parameter can explain intentional binding effects across multiple experimental conditions. The opposite possibility is uh, to use a causal prior which assumes no relationship between this action event and outcome event. They are totally random. Um, so the Bayesian observer uh, judges uh, which, is, which condition is more likely based on noisy sensory inputs and 
uh, use that to guess the timing of action and outcome events. Um, so we simulated and uh, analyzed this Bayesian model and uh, uh, indeed the model can reproduce the experimentally observed intentional binding effects. So this uh, left panel is the experimental results by Patrick Huggard. They observed um, attraction effect in the voluntary condition, repairing effect in the involuntary condition, and the no bias in the sham condition where uh, TMS stimulation is replaced by just a quick sound. Uh, and indeed, the Bayesian model uh, shows qualitatively the same result. Um, attraction in the, in the voluntary condition, repulsion in the involuntary condition, and no bias in the sham condition. Um, and interestingly, the uh, Bayesian model not only explained this voluntary versus involuntary effect, but it also uh, it reproduces another set of experiments um, reported by Walk. They tried uh, different levels of um, tone uncertainty. They control the tone uncertainty by playing some background noise. If the background noise is loud, then uh, there's the sens sensory outcome uncertainty is high. What they observed is that the intentional binding effect, attraction effect is stronger uh, under high tone uncertainty condition. And uh, our Bayesian model could qualitatively produce this effect. Now, uh, it's uh, interesting that um, the intentional binding reflects sense of agency because um, it's more attracting um, in the voluntary condition than involuntary condition. So it's a, a measure of sense of agency. However, it's also dependent on uh, sensory uncertainty. And uh, um, in particular, under uh, high outcome uncertainty, uh, subject has a difficulty hearing the outcome tone. So presumably the sense of agency of the subject is low, but the intentional binding on the other hand is strong. Um, hence, uh, intentional binding reflects sense of agency, but it's confounded by sensory uncertainty. So um, a natural question is, what is a good measure for sense of agency that can integrate this uh, sensory uncertainty effect? So we looked into a Bayesian model um, and uh, um, asked whether there is any key variable in this uh, Bayesian model that correlates with the empirical sense of agency. And we found uh, confidence in causal estimate as a candidate. Um, in this simple experimental setup, we can mathematically re represent this confidence in causal estimate with this formula and can compute this quantity. Uh, and uh, so it's plotted uh, how this confidence in causal estimate uh, differs across different uh, experimental conditions. And we found that the confidence in causal estimate is high in the voluntary condition, medium in the involuntary condition, low in the sham condition. And uh, this confidence in causal estimate decreases with the uh, um, tone uncertainty, uh, despite increasing intentional binding effects. So um, this, this measure of confidence in causal estimate uh, correlates well with uh, empirical sense of agency measure. And uh, this formula um, has an interesting point as well. Uh, on one hand, it is proportional to the estimated probability of your action causing the outcome. Um, it's natural that this factor comes in because this is more or less the definition of the sense of agency itself. 
but uh, interestingly, it also depends on the uh, sensory uncertainties. So our measure is a sensory uh, precision dependent measure of sense of agency that can uh, reproduce uh, empirical sense of agency measures. So I would like to thank my collaborator, Roberto Legaspi. Um, thank you so much for listening. <laughs>